UW360 is proudly supported by Pacific Office Automation, Copy, Print, Workflow, and IT, Problem Solved. Hi everyone, I'm Carolyn Douglas. Welcome to UW360. We're joining you from inside the labs of Mark Metrics, one of the companies launched out of UW's Center for Commercialization, better known as C4C. C4C was recently named the best startup incubator in the entire world. We'll show you why a little later in the show. We'll also celebrate more than 20 years of success for the UPASS program and see how this simple card has helped make the UW a greener, more accessible campus for all. Plus, we get a front row seat to the UW's World Series performance at Meany Theater, featuring one of the most famous choreographers in the country. And we'll see how a new program out of the UW School of Social Work is working to ease the stress of the sandwich generation by finding better ways to support both elders and their caregivers. But first, he just may be the most recognizable Husky of all, Dubs, the UW mascot. Go to any Husky home football game and chances are you've seen him. But did you know that Dubs is technically not a Husky? UWTV's John Yeager has the story of the big dog on campus and why last spring at commencement, Dubs finally got the recognition he deserves. This is a story about unfinished business. It starts, for me, where my collegiate career ended, commencement 2013. That's me receiving my master's degree in digital media from the School of Communication. Here's a selfie of me with the director of the program. But this really isn't a story about me, well, just a little, but we'll get to that later. It's mostly about Dubs, the University of Washington's mascot. Good boy. You coming to say hi? Jennifer McBride is Dubs owner. She's owned Dubs for five years, since 2009. In 2008, she remembers. That year that we didn't have a mascot, the football team went 0-12 that year. Dubs, his first year, the record improved greatly. Jennifer and her partner were chosen from a big field of applicants to take care of the mascot. She says Dubs is a friendly dog who gets along with just about everybody, even the cat back home. That's partly because Dubs is actually not a husky. He's an Alaskan Malamute, a friendlier breed. Still, Dubs has what McBride calls a strong prey drive. Being raised with cats, he learned um, to get along with them and not to chase them, that they're friends, not food. Being the owner of a high-profile dog like Dubs also comes with responsibility. Hi. Yes. Yeah. And that's where these UW students come in. Several times a week, University of Washington students take Dubs for a walk to learn how to work with him. The walk is where students learn and Dubs really shines. And he really doesn't do that much. He lets people pet him and take pictures. Jennifer says even when he was a puppy, Dubs was a bit of a, well, camera hound. Do you want to take a picture? Yeah, sure. <laughs> but that's one reason why Dubs has become so popular. Jennifer tells me the UW Office of Ceremonies requested that Dubs be a part of this year's commencement. Jennifer agreed and suggested that Dubs walk in the ceremony. This was the first year the mascot walked across the stage with two of his graduating student handlers. And so I guess if you walk across the stage, you, it means you have a degree. <laughs> Somebody actually put up a sign in the university bookstore calling Dubs an honorary holder of a dog turret. But he never actually got a sheepskin, just a little bit more respect. Big dog on campus, cool. Jennifer McBride actually started a blog the day after she brought Dubs home. She posted pictures as Dubs grew up. It allowed people to really get to know him and connect with him. Now the image is all over. Dubs has become, well, a big dog on campus. And Jennifer McBride says you can credit social media for that. Because everybody has a camera with them all the time. He's had his picture taken so many times. And I think it's even on a list of things to do before you graduate, get your picture taken with dubs. Which gets us back to that unfinished business. 
I spent a couple of days with Jennifer, the handlers, and of course Doves, to shoot this story. But before I could finish, there was just one thing left to do on my list. Come on, Dubs. The selfie. There. Done. For 360, I'm John Yeager, UWTV. Jennifer McBride tells us some of Dubs' student handlers use their college work with Dubs to find jobs in the veterinary field after they graduate. If you'd like to follow all things Dubs, we'll offer a link to his Facebook page on our website at uwtv.org slash uw360. When we come back, see how one simple card has helped reduce traffic congestion and shuttle tens of thousands of UW students and staff around town as UW360 continues. Welcome back to UW360. It was a simple but revolutionary idea using one universal metro pass to help thousands of busy UW students and staff get around town without further clogging our streets. Rio Barber reports on the remarkable success story of UPASS and how students helped keep the program sustainable for years to come. With the newest smart car technology, it's never been easier to hop on a bus for that early morning commute. Today we'll get a look at how the Universal U-Pass came to be and how it's helping Seattle become a greener, more sustainable city with just a swipe of a Husky card. Over 150 years ago, students took their first steps onto the UW campus, not much of a carbon footprint. But as the world evolved and the university grew, tens of thousands of people started traveling to campus each day, and they brought their cars. A constant source of annoyance to students, faculty, and visitors alike is the ever-increasing problem of parking. Traffic was a problem. We were hearing from neighborhoods adjacent to the university that there were parking problems. Parking was a major issue. Heidi Wills was ASUW president from 1990 to 1991. She championed an innovative solution to the traffic and parking problems that plagued the U District for years. There are problems with that many people at such a large university driving to campus. It just made so much sense to make public transportation something that's more affordable and more attractive to more people. That was the birth of the Universal U-Pass, a simple yet revolutionary card that provides access to all of the county's metro options, encouraging students and staff to take advantage of alternative methods of transportation. U-Pass is great because it addresses one of our biggest transit-oriented centers, the University District. It puts in the hands of 40,000 students and some 13,000 staff uh, the means to use our entire transit system. But in recent years, with the economy and recession, the U-Pass program began having serious financial difficulties. In 2008 to 2009, because of many factors that were outside of the university's control, we saw a doubling in the price of the U-Pass which was making the program unsustainable, causing a huge mass of students to begin opting out of the program. And we saw participation rates in the program at historic lows, which was basically threatening a death spiral of increasing costs, declining participation. In 2011, students took a stand to save the U-Pass. With their support, the UW Board of Regents passed the Universal U-Pass fee. And the Universal U-Pass means that everybody pays a U-Pass fee every quarter. With the Universal U-Pass, the cost to students has actually gone down by 23%. Now the entire student body and most of the staff have this handy little card to get around. And the benefits of U-Pass are built outside of the UW community. For starters, U-Pass helps keep about 8,000 metric tons of CO2 emissions out of the air we all breathe. It also frees up traffic congestion on city streets and major highways as about 55,000 people commute to campus using transportation that's greener than driving alone. And using the U-Pass makes UW more green, more accessible, and a better neighbor. 
And we were the first, we were the trailblazers, so congratulations, Huskies. On April 20th, 2012, the City of Seattle and King County declared U-Pass Day, recognizing 20 years of community impact. I'm really proud that we can ensure that the U-Pass will continue for at least another 20 years and beyond. And I'm excited that we can count on the U-Pass being there for students um, for the next generation. Our next story is about the World Series, not the Baseball World Series, but the renowned artistic program at the UW's Meany Theater that attracts nationally and internationally famous artists to work with students and others. The UW's World Series most recently brought to town one of the most famous dance choreographers in the country, Robert Moses. Bob Branham reports. Turn it up! <laughs> A stellar evening of solo and group dance at the University of Washington's Meany Hall. Brought to the stage thanks to collaboration between celebrated choreographer Robert Moses and the university's dance and World Series programs. They give us a very hands-on experience and they're all very invested in our lives and in us as people and artists. This collaboration began weeks earlier as individual dancers perform for just one hour under Moses' watchful eye and criticism pushing the dancers to their creative limits. In very few words, he would really know where you're at and then push you. <laughs> the final work in a weekend of public performances would be called Draft, since it represented continual change and growth for Moses and the dancers. We've proven that we can continue to stretch the boundaries of what we're doing because our audiences want it. Michelle Witt is executive director of Meany Hall and artistic director of the U of W World Series, which draws a mix of national and international artists, musicians, and of course, choreographers like Robert Moses and his professional dance company, Robert Moses Kin. His work is extraordinarily beautiful. It is very provocative. It's very demanding for the dancers, and it's very, very intelligent. That's one of the goals of the World Series program, to expose students, faculty, and local audiences to the best artists in the country and include them in the creative process. Our mission is to present diverse and dynamic live performance, and, but that fuel lifelong learning and cultural exchange. Finally, visiting artists applaud the World Series program. Robert Moses says working with the more than two dozen local dancers has given him a wealth of new ideas. I get to come here, work on this, and maybe get 30 other works out of it. It's a fantastic process for me. And for the World Series program at the University of Washington, which has doubled student attendance and attracted 7,000 additional audience members in the past two years. We've had a lot of support from the dance department here and from the faculty and, of course, from the students and, and alumni, and we're really appreciative of that. It's a huge opportunity for our dance program. We often don't have uh, the funds to bring national and international artists here in the way that we want to. And the UW World Series has provided so many opportunities for our students to have these experiences that we, we can't do for them. We're a melting pot and how do you get a bunch of people in the room with different stories, different backgrounds, different levels to say one thing. I mean, that's America. The UW's World Series is a thrilling opportunity for students here to take their studies to a whole new level. It's really a win for all involved, the local artists, the visiting superstars, and of course, the audiences. Keep an eye out for more spectacular UW World Series performances to come. And when we come back, we take a look at another incredible program that's finding innovative ways to better support elders and their caregivers as UW 360 continues. Welcome back to UW 360 from the Mark Metrics Labs. They're often called the sandwich generation. Millions of people who are caring for both their elderly parents and their children at the same time juggling careers and carpools and doctor's appointments on top of all their other family obligations can really be a struggle. So the University of Washington School of Social Work 
is lending a helping hand. It's launching a new center to help find innovative ways to support both elders and their caregivers. Terry Murphy reports. At this South Seattle Community Center, these golden oldies are clearly enjoying their golden years. This is a haven for senior citizens and considered a model program by the University of Washington School of Social Work. In many ways, older adults are our society's most underutilized asset. You know, they have lifetimes of experience, of skills, of wisdom, and as a whole, we've not taken advantage of that. The vast majority of families are caring for their older relatives. But that's why they're the invisible or unsung heroes, because we don't provide enough supports for families to do that. Family caregivers are, are truly the backbone of our long-term care system here in the United States. The challenge of caregivers is the focus of this event, sponsored by the Washington Post and AARP. Dr. Hoyman is part of a distinguished panel that includes the First Lady of Washington State, Trudy Inslee. I'm here as a mom, as a daughter, and as a grandma. As a society, we don't have long-term care policy. Most Western European societies do. More and more Asian countries are developing long-term care policies. We don't. To better address the needs of elders and their caregivers, UW School of Social Work has launched a new center. It's called the Healthy Generations Hartford Center of Excellence in Geriatric Work. Our goal really is to respond to the changing nature of aging in our society. We're doing that, we're moving forward through our community-based collaborations, building on the expertise at the University of Washington. As director of the Hartford Center for Excellence, those collaborations take Karen Fredrickson Golson out into the community. On this day, she's at the Asian Counseling and Referral Service. Asian Counseling and Referral Service is one of the agencies. We also look, work with the Veterans Administration. We work with Consejo. We work with AARP. This community center is home to Club Bamboo, a multi-generational oasis. Beyond the activities, this is a model program because it's a respite for family caregivers. Here, they can know their elders are in a safe and stimulating environment. Caregiving can be rewarding. It's a great bonding experience. However, taking care of someone around the clock can be very stressful. The Hartford Center for Excellence will continue to collaborate with community leaders to support this kind of place, a place where age and color and culture are woven together creating a tapestry for life. The UW School of Social Work is encouraging students to consider careers working with elders. Seniors are a wealth of knowledge and experience, and the need for elderly care and support increases every day. When we come back, we go behind the scenes here at Mark Metrics as UW 360 continues. Welcome back to UW360. We're here at Mark Metrics, one of the many successful businesses launched out of the UW Center for Commercialization, better known as C4C. Austin Seedentoff takes us behind the scenes here at Mark Metrics and shows us why C4C was recently named the best startup incubator in the world. <laughs> It is just an absolute thrill to be able to welcome you all here today. Innovators, leaders, and entrepreneurs gathered at Fluke Hall to learn more about 18 successful companies that began at the UW as a researcher's idea. And sometimes, researchers want to spin these ideas out of a research environment and into a commercial one. This is where C4C steps in to help out. UW Center for Commercialization, or C4C, helps create businesses by utilizing technologies developed at the University of Washington. This year, C4C had 18 spin-out companies, making it the most successful emerging startup incubator in the world. And the fastest center of complete, stable, and successful commercialization of intellectual talent in the United States today is right here at Fluke Hall, University of Washington. 
This is a great day to be a dog. C4C has been critical in helping these companies raise funds and license technology developed from research at the University of Washington. By reapplying that technology to solve commercial problems, these companies have established strong footholds in the private sector, generating revenue and creating jobs. I was hoping you could tell me about Applied Dexterity. Yes, so at Applied Dexterity, we are commercializing the Raven surgical robot. C4C has played uh, roles from helping people navigate the whole licensing process, how to connect startups to investors. Let's find out how to find the actual investors who are going to invest in this technology early. The goal of C4C is to enable UW innovation and UW people to make a, a difference in the real world. One such company is making its mark on the world, Mark Metrics. Like this. Brian Marquardt founded Mark Metrics to lease and develop technology he created as an engineer at UW. His Raman probe can optically measure the chemical composition of an object just by touching it. This innovative and fast way of taking measurements has led Mark Metrics to work successfully in oil, gas, food, and pharmaceutical industries. What we do is develop inline, real time sensing, usually with light, to make measurements of a person's product in real time. I have both of sort of both worlds. I have the UW side where we can look at fundamental science problems, and then we have the Mark Metrics entity that allows us to actually spin technology into functional products. And so there's realization even at the academic community that getting out academic research into the real world is, is important. So C4C is really in the middle of that. C4C has helped Brian take his idea out into the world, even to the bottom of the ocean to take chemical measurements with his probe. We're doing some work right now with NASA thinking about doing the same types of things for icy worlds, using the same Raman probe potentially on a mission into space. Remember, Mark Metrics is just one of 18 companies coming out of C4C this year, companies that are bridging the gap between academic and commercial worlds. As the world's greatest startup incubator, C4C should have some pretty cool stuff for us to look at next year. I'm Austin Seedentoff, and I'll see you next time. That does it for this edition of UW 360. If you'd like more information on any of the stories you saw today, just head to our website at uwtv.org slash uw360. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Carolyn Douglas. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time with all new stories from the University of Washington. UW 360 is produced by UWTV and is proudly supported by AARP Seattle. More at aarp.org/seattle.